Hello, a very good morning to all of you. Today we are going to discuss the case note of Mrs. Sandra Peterson, who was under your care at uh, the medical assessment unit at Spirit Hospital from 20 to March 2012 to 22nd March 2012. Today's date is 22nd March 2012. So this patient has multiple problems like um, upper respiratory tract infection, problems with uh, polypharmacy, and she has recently suffered a fall. And all these problems are that it's not just a single diagnosis. So we have uh, <coughs> multiple problems here. So let us discuss the the task what we have to write here so the writing task here is very clear you are a charge nurse on medical assessment unit where mrs sandra peterson has resided during her hospital stay so you are a registered nurse there at uh, the hospital where mrs sandra peterson was there Using the information in the case notes, write a letter to the community nurse at Spirit Community Health Center. So you are writing a letter to the community nurse at uh, Community Health Centers, Spirit Community Health Center. That's the Community Health Center. It may be the Community Health Center, which uh, your hospital is being associated with because you're working in spirit hospital so spirit community health center may be uh so maybe an associate of your hospital so that is possible here so it's um uh because it's just an assumption so we are not just going in detail for um in that. So what you are going to discuss in this particular letter is that you are going to explain a relevant background and medical history and provide information about discharge requirements. So you have to give information on the letter which uh, you are going to write. So you are going to include relevant background information about Mrs. Sandra Peterson. You are going to uh, brief her medical history. You are going to provide information about the discharge requirement. So three things you have to make sure that the letter should contain three things, the integral parts. So once we introduce the patient to the addressee, you in your letter we should include these three things you have to make aware the community nurse the background of mrs peterson the medical history of mrs peterson and the discharge requirements too so all these three things should be organized in the letter in uh, in an appealing way so that's the way we can write the letter in different formats uh so it's not a problem there because this um, this letter we do have uh, a lot of problems and uh, it's difficult to organize this particular letter and uh, different candidates may have different norms uh, when they format this particular case note and when they organize this particular letter it will be different from one person to another so we we go for the best uh, presentation best organizing capacity so you don't worry you you have your own norms and uh, you have your own ideas based on the best of your knowledge you can frame the letter, no problem at all. So it's up to you. So let's go ahead with uh, 
uh, details what we have to see in the letter. We have Sandra Peters and I have seen different letters, uh, different case notes of uh, Mrs. Sandra Peters. And in different case notes, we have different date of birth. They'll be changing the date of birth. So it's not a matter there. The matter is almost the same in all the case notes. Uh, but you can see some uh, in some of the case notes, the admission date is different, the um, date of birth is different. <coughs> uh, some differences are seen in some case notes. Right? I have seen some most recent case notes. This is uh, date of birth is uh, March instead of um, January. So that's the reason I just uh, want to inform you. This is uh, one case note. This is, an, I think, I have. Uh, the older version of this case not we have newer version we have different dates here change it now let's go ahead with the diagnosis now she's married and she has a, a daughter and macarthur so this is uh, she's from applethorpe and the community in the nurse is also from applethorpe uh, you are writing to the community health nurse in applethorpe now you are going to see what problems Mrs. Peterson has. The problem Mrs. Peterson has is upper respiratory tract infection. Now, now we have the upper respiratory tract infection as the base problem here. And polypharmacy, she's taking 24 medications at the time of admission, including a variety of over-the-counter medication, which was encouraged by her doctor. So this uh, this was the this where the diagnosis what we can see in <coughs> in the case not now let us go ahead what happened to her right now what 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 made her admission uh, this is the problem uh, it it started by cough, by the cough uh, with a love phlegm or a sputum on 13th of March 2012. After five days, she her condition got worsened and she got her mobility affected. She got decreased mobility and she was found in sitting position on floor. It means she fell, but no injuries. Now, this is what they mean by this found in sitting position. It means it represents a fall. And that was the first fall. And now the second day, um, the, again, we have uh, a fall at was in toilet that, but still we have no injuries. Now the third day on 20th, again, we have a fall. And this was a third fall, ambulance was called and she was uh, taken to the hospital. Our hospital received her. And uh, that time um, our BP was 190, 90. This was a high BP because she has a history of hypertension. She has a history of uh, moderate dementia and occasional incontinence of urine. She has past history like that. Now this, let's go with the social history. We, we have the social history going like this. We have... Um, she lives with um, a daughter and two uh, daughter and son-in-law at her uh, two-bedroom flat. <coughs> and Miss MacArthur, her daughter, is overly supportive, and uh, she is uh, overreacting and anxious about her mother's health. She is a little bit um, uh, more into the care of her mother. So religion no matter here, hobbies no matter here. Okay, so requires some assistance with bathing, dressing, and toileting. So this is uh, the social history. In the social history, she required these things. And this was met by a home care worker who visits Ms. Uh, Peterson twice a week for bathing. Okay, now that's it. Now let's go ahead with the medical progress. Now when, when we go ahead with the medical progress, you can uh, say that the X-ray normal, all these investigations you can see. And um, 
you you can see augmenting was uh, commenced uh, and right now you can see it's continuing now now patient now has intermittent dry cough and uh, all these things are there and one more thing which is important here medication rationalized by the doctor as detailed in the discharge plan so this is something which i find it right now it is something crucial medication rationalized by doctor because she had a polypharmacy she has a history of taking <clears throat> 24 at the time of admission she was taking 24 um, over the counter medications which was encouraged by her daughter so this has to be uh, the, some action has to be taken now uh, we have given antibiotic for infection that's uh, upper respiratory tract infection and and we have given some care for the mobility assistance all these things so what care we have given for the polypharmacy is very important what what is what action what intervention we have done is that uh, the medication rationalization which was done by the doctor and this is detailed in the discharge plan and this is something which is very crucial in this letter and um, i think that is to be added in the following letter which we have uh, in the following paragraphs let's go ahead with the um, nursing management what we have done um yeah we can see that the patient is stable and here has, she has uh, a good saturation in room air and she has no um signs of infection as uh, she is a febr febrile <clears throat> now she is independently ambulating on a seat walker for short distances and long distances uh, on a wheelchair with an assistant so that is very good so the progress is no signs of infection so she is able to walk short distances independently and long distances on wheelchair with assistant or assistance of one person now you you know the requirement the medical requirement she need or or the personal requirement she needs is that she requires full assistance for bathing and some assistance in dressing and grooming so we have all these things now we have my confusion but cooperative now let's go ahead with the discharge plan so you have the community nurse referral and you know that you have you are in, in, instructing the community nurse uh, for continuing uh, the augmentin the tablet which we have started uh, at the time of uh, detecting the infection the respiratory, respiratory tract infection we have started augmentin uh, all these days we were taking the augmentin right now we uh, the doctor has uh, instructed to continue the tablet for uh, another five days um, at the start of a meal metoprolol 20 mg bd candestran 16 mg men okay medication monitoring and assistance daughter record education monitoring due to the history of uh, polypharmacy ongoing care with personal hygiene required <coughs> so let us go ahead with the <coughs> <clears throat> with the response which we have here is that today's date is 22nd march 2012 what we can see is 22nd march 2012 so we are writing to the community health center spirit community health center community nurse spirit community health center and the address is very clear dear community nurse or dear nurse you can write no problem or you can write dear sir or madam no problem now reference Mr. Mrs. Sandra Peterson, the, pay, uh, the name of the client and the date of birth is given. We have not written the age, we have not calculated the age, we written the date of birth as it is. Now let's go ahead with the purpose of the letter. I'm writing to refer uh, Mrs. Sandra Peterson, who is recuperating from an upper respiratory tract infection and an accidental fall. <coughs> now, um, 
right now I just have to reconsider this purpose because you know that the diagnosis is uh, includes it includes polypharmacy. So I have to reconsider this particular purpose. I am writing to refer Mrs. Sandra Peterson who has who has the who has uh, been who has been treated at our care for upper respiratory tract infection for upper respiratory tract infection uh, polypharmacy and an accident yes so uh, I am writing to refer Ms. Sandra Peterson, who has been treated at our hospital for upper respiratory tract infection, polypharmacy, and an accidental fall. So she got treatment at our hospital. This is the best way to write this diagnosis. Uh, what what conditions? Uh, because you know that we we if we write upper respiratory tract infection alone, you know that the purpose is not complete. Now when we write uh, when we write upper respiratory and polypharmacy again we have one thing missing because the presenting she presented to the hospital in an ambulance and that condition was because of a fall she had the third consecutive fall in the third day so she had a fall on 18th 19th and 20th so the presenting why she was present was presented to our care is not because of the infection it was because of the fall so we, we have uh, all these three conditions there so when we uh, when we can if we can con include all these things in the purpose very briefly though we need, we have uh, uh, we have to address the problems. So she was treated for upper respiratory tract infection. She was treated for polypharmacy and she was treated for the fall. <clears throat> so now the problem is solved. She requires ongoing care, yes, monitoring and support from your facility following her discharge today. And she was in our care and she is moving to your facility okay now we are handing over to you so from your facility you have to provide her from your facility you have to provide him provide her the support ongoing care monitoring and support so that's what we need here now let's uh, see what's the condition of mrs peterson mrs peterson was brought to our care following a third fall at her home um so we we have not written the first fall, second fall, all these things. So we have a, a presenting illness, 13 and then 18, 19, 20th of this month, all these days we have a long history there. But what is the reason for her presentation? What's the reason for her admission? She was brought to our care <coughs> after a third fall at her home. It means that she had two falls earlier. So we don't need to mention when the fall happened before. It's not the matter. So the reason for her admission is presented in the very beginning of the paragraph that is the third fall. On examination, she was confused and has shortness of breath. That's what, what we have observed. And we have observed one more thing. The BP was recorded as high as 190. 90 mmhg and was found taking 24 medication which was encouraged by her daughter so we have the initial problems there uh the problems were she had bp shortness of breath confusion and she had uh, 
she she was uh, taking 24 medications now these are the problems so the first two sentences we have um, seen what what problems she had when, when uh, at the time of admission so what we have done a series of investigations were done you have seen a series of investigations so a lot of x-ray ct scan blood investigations were done which confirmed uh, respiratory infection okay so which confirmed the uh, infection so i can say infection um okay so you can go with respiratory infection no problem um because no other uh, condition no other things well no, we have only respiratory infection so we can okay series of investigations are done which uh, confirmed respiratory infection during hospitalization she was treated conservatively now i don't need uh, to say mrs peterson here because we have already said mr p mrs peterson in the beginning of the paragraph during hospitalization she was treated conservatively and was prescribed with augmentin in addition to her regular antihypertensive medications okay now now she was treated conservatively and was prescribed with antibiotics so the name is given augmentin in addition to her regular antihypertensive medication so she had uh, some uh, <coughs> antihypertensive medications which was there which were there what was there metaprolol okay so that's it mm, in addition to her regular medication so i just cancel off that regular antihypertensive okay um so what was added is augmented okay currently she is stable uh and is able to mobilize short distances on seat walker and co and covers long distances on a wheelchair with assistance so right now what she has uh, what uh, is what you can see is that her condition is stable she is good and she's able to mobilize short distances on a seat walker. So she is mobilizing on a seat walker and she's uh, moving to long distances on a wheelchair with um, a personal assistant. Okay. Okay. So because it was in one personal assistant. So. Mrs. Peterson lives with her daughter, who is very supportive. Um, who is very supportive? Huh. Yes. She has um, moderately. She has moderate dementia, hypertension, and occasional incontinence of urine. A home care worker assists her in bathing twice a week. Okay. Now the social history is clear. So background is given, her uh, medical condition is given. Well, now, what is the requirement here? In view of the above, kindly monitor Mrs. Peterson's medication complaints. Okay. Which was rationalized by the doctor. So this is something very important. So kindly monitor Mrs. Peterson's medication complaints, which was rationalized by the doctor. Okay. So that's the first duty. And educate her daughter regarding her care, especially regarding polypharmacy. Okay. So we have the second thing. Um, so if you um because you know you can include all these things you know you don't need to write metaprolol candestran augmentin all these things when we write this particular thing the medication complaints which was rationalized by the doctor so it is 
So the doctor has rationalized the medication, what medications you have to take. So it includes augmentin, it includes metaprolol, it includes cadestran. So it was rationalized by the doctor. So just monitor Ms. Peterson medication complaints, which was rationalized by the doctor. So what we have uh, written actually, what, we don't need to write these medications as, as we have written that particular sentence. So instead of this particular sentence, I have added the medications was medications were rationalized by the doctor and you have to monitor those. So these are the medications which are rationalized. This is ongoing medications. So that has to be monitored. So we have up to this point, you have one, two, three, four, all these points are included in the first sentence. Now we have daughter requires education regarding uh, polypharmacy, ongoing care with personal hygiene required. These two things are pending. Let's go with the requirement paragraph. Um, yes, and educate her daughter regarding her care. Okay, regarding uh, Miss Peterson's care, especially because I have two her back to back her, so it got it will be getting confused if you read. <clears throat> so I have added the person's name, which was rationalized by the doctor and educate her daughter regarding Mrs. Peterson's care, especially regarding polypharmacy. Of not, she needs sincere assistance in maintaining her personal hygiene. That's what, that was the last discharge instruction here. Now, please do not hesitate to contact me. So all, all these uh, data is, uh, in, uh, they are included. So we have a clear purpose there uh, at the top and the medical condition is uh, um, what happened and right, what, uh, what treatment we have given and what's the condition right now, it's highlighted in the yellow. And what about her social and medical history is there in the next paragraph. And the requirement that which you are presenting to the community nurse is there in the next paragraph. And that's how the organizing of this Santa Peterson Letters goes. Okay, thank you for listening. Have a nice day.